In early 2012, AMD shook up the GPU world with the legendary Radeon HD 7970. It offered truly next-generation performance and features for the time thanks to their new GCN architecture. As to be expected though, this came with a pretty big price tag of 550 USD, which made it out of reach for a lot of people. As such, AMD released the HD 7970's cost-cut counterpart shortly afterwards, the Radeon HD 7950. To start off, we'll get into the card's specifications. It's using a slightly cut down Tahiti GPU, dubbed Tahiti Pro, which has 1792 shading units and is clocked at 800MHz. As for its VRM configuration, we have 3GB of GDDR5, which is clocked at 1250MHz and is running on a wide 384-bit bus making for a total memory bandwidth of 240GB per second. As to be expected with a GCN card, API support is pretty good with the card boasting support for up to DirectX 12 feature level 11.1, OpenGL 4.6, and Vulkan 1.2. The TDP comes in pretty high at 200 watts, which is expected for a high-end card from over a decade ago. To be honest though, it really isn't that bad as it only requires two 6-pin peg connectors to keep the card fed. As long as you use a decent quality 500 watt unit, you shouldn't have any problems running this card. Anyway, let's get into a bit of background information on the HD7950. In January of 2012, AMD ushered in the first iteration of their new GCN architecture with the Radeon HD7970, which stirred up the high-end GPU market with its amazing performance and extensive set of features. In typical AMD fashion, a few weeks later they released a cheaper and slightly cut down version of the same card to sew up the high-end market. This card was the Radeon HD7950. Its changes over the 7970 included four of the compute units being disabled, which made for a shader count of 1792 instead of 2048, along with 14% lower core clocks and 9% lower memory clocks. Aside from that, the cards are essentially identical, even shipping with the same 3GB of GDDR5. Being priced $100 less than the HD 7970 while offering similar performance and surpassing it when overclocked, the HD 7950 was a great high-end choice back in the day. Not to mention it handily defeated Nvidia's previous flagship, the GTX 580, while costing the same and offering a lot of new features. A few months later Nvidia shot back with the GTX 670, which did offer consistently better performance than the 7950 at a competitive price. With enough price cuts, AMD was able to restore the 7950's competitiveness in the high-end GPU space, but when all was said and done, it ultimately didn't make as much of a splash as its older brother, the HD 7970. However, 10 years later, the HD 7950 has pulled ahead substantially over the GTX 670 and newer applications, which can mainly be attributed to some issues with Nvidia's Kepler architecture, which I go into a little detail on in my GTX 770 video. To sum it up, Kepler requires special optimization tricks in order to make use of all resources in an SM, and as Kepler cards have become older and older, these optimizations are no longer implemented in newer games. And since GCN doesn't have this limitation, the HD 7950 is able to take advantage of its full performance in pretty much any scenario as long as it has the driver support. Which brings us to our next topic. How is driver support on the HD 7950? Well, unfortunately, AMD pulled the driver support plug on a lot of older GCN cards last year, which has negatively impacted the performance in a lot of new games. However, thanks to the modded Nimes drivers, new games are actually able to be played on these 10 year old cards. For today's testing though, I decided not to use them as my test suite doesn't contain any games that would take advantage of them. Yet. With that out of the way, let's take a look around the card itself, as this one is particularly interesting. This HD7950 is pretty special as it's the actually quite rare Mac Edition card made by Sapphire. As such, the card sports this really nice white shroud, which I think gives the card a very exotic look. Under the hood, the cooler is the same vapor chamber heatsink used on the reference 7950 and 7970, which does an excellent job of cooling the GPU. Anyway, you might think this card would be quite different compared to its non-Mac Edition counterparts, right? Well, unfortunately not really. The only notable difference I could find had to do with the card's dual BIOS. Instead of having two copies of the same stock firmware like the reference 7950, this Mac Edition card has one Mac compatible BIOS and one Windows compatible BIOS, which can be toggled with the card's BIOS switch. Other than that and the awesome looking shroud though, I really couldn't see much of a difference compared to the reference card, which was a little disappointing, but it's no big deal. Anyway, Tahiti cards are well known for being great overclockers, so we're definitely not letting that go to waste today. 
for our overclock, I tuned the card up to 1100 megahertz on core and 1500 megahertz on memory, which represents a huge 38% increase to core frequencies, as well as a 20% increase to memory frequencies. Now, keep in mind this did require tuning the voltage up by 119 millivolts up to 1150 millivolts. To cope with the extra heat output, I used a fixed fan speed of 70%, and spoiler alert, it's fairly loud at this speed. It's worth mentioning that at these clocks, this card should surpass a stock HD7970 in performance. So, it's time to get into some testing. We'll be using my main PC, and its specs are on screen. All footage was captured with an external device, so there's no hit to performance. Let's see how this Tahiti-based beast holds up in some games. First up, we have Phasmophobia, and here I ran the game with the 1080p resolution in the high preset, with AA and 50% texture resolution. The card got averages of 101 FPS, with 1% lows down to 46. One overclocked averages jumped 32% to 133 FPS, with 1% lows rising 20% to 55. Overall, the card yielded a great experience here, with the game looking great and running well too, if a little stuttery. I found it not to be too bad though, and as always, locking the game to 60 FPS will smooth that out a lot. Next game up is Monster Hunter World, and I used the 1080p resolution along with the low preset in DX11 mode. We got averages of 57 FPS, with 1% lows down to 45. One overclocked averages jumped 25% to 71 FPS, with 1% lows rising 31% to 59. Frame times were excellent, making for a super smooth experience overall. If you wanted to, you could increase the texture quality to medium with a very minimal hit to performance thanks to the 3GB of VRAM. Next up is the ever-popular CSGO, and I ran the game with the 720p resolution in the low settings with shadows set to high. We got averages of 224 FPS, with 1% lows down to 121. When overclocked, averages jumped 14% to 256 FPS, with 1% lows rising a small 7% to 130. Frame times were excellent, which made for a very competitive experience here. As to be expected with CSGO, the overclock scaling was pretty poor, as even our potent overclock yielded a minimal increase to frame rates. Next came up is Project Cars 3, and here I used the 1080p resolution with the low settings. The card managed averages of 52 FPS, with 1% lows down to 42. When overclocked, averages jumped 21% to 63 FPS, with 1% lows rising 19% to 50. The game looked nice and ran pretty well, especially when overclocked. Overall, this game was a great showing for the HD7950. Tomb Raider is up next, and here I used the built-in benchmark with the 1080p resolution and the ultimate preset. We got averages of 51 FPS, with 1% lows down to 37. When overclocked, averages jumped 27% to 65 FPS, with 1% lows rising by 35% to 50. The game looked fantastic with the ultimate preset, and our frame times were very smooth as well, which made for an excellent experience. Next up we have Crisis, and I used the built-in benchmark with the 1080p resolution and the very high preset with no AA. The card got averages of 49 FPS, with 1% lows down to 39. When overclocked, averages jumped 37% to 67 FPS, with 1% lows rising 28% to 50. Frame times were great and the game looked very nice too, with this game showing great overclock scaling in particular. Looks like the HD7950 can run Crisis after all. Our last game for today is Just Cause 2, and I used the built-in benchmark with the 1080p resolution in the highest settings with 8xAA. We got averages of 80 FPS, with 1% lows down to 60. One overclocked averages jumped 29% to 103 FPS, with 1% lows rising 30% to 78. The game looked great and our frame times were excellent to boot. If you wanted even better visuals, you could increase the resolution to 1440p with a moderate hit to frame rates. So, the conclusion. 
The HD 7950 performs great in a lot of modern games while being relatively affordable too. The card also performs very nicely in scenarios outside of gaming, as the last three videos on my channel as well as this one were edited with this card and I had pretty much no issues while doing so. Overall, the HD 7950 is a fantastic card that holds up very well today, and it's not hard to see why AMD's Tahiti cards are widely regarded as some of the best aging of all time. In a future video, I might even test the card's performance in some new games with the Nemez drivers and see how well it stacks up there. For now though, that'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.